can't remember who said this, but certainly was a smart person, said mathematics is the language in which the book of the universe is written. My name is Luciano Rizzola. I am a professor of theoretical astrophysics at Goethe University in Frankfurt in Germany. My work is of teaching, but that passion is sided by another passion, that of research. I do research in relativistic astrophysics, that is the astrophysics where gravitational fields are very important, and in particular this is true for black holes and neutron stars. Everybody has been on a starry night looking at the stars, right? When you look at that, you can't but ask yourself, how on earth is this possible? Or what are those little things that are shining there, right? There are different ways in which you can explore the universe. One is just taking observations to learn about how the universe is made, how it actually evolved. My task is to take evidence coming from the observations and then try to explain them. And for this, I need to solve equations. But the equations I'm, I'm dealing with are way too complicated to be solved uh, on a piece of paper. Let me give you a practical example. Together with many other scientists, we have accepted the challenge of taking the first picture of a black hole. There are techniques that have been developed in radio astronomy to do this. And to make a long story short, we took these observations, we made a picture, and that's the, the picture that you see uh, everywhere now if you look for black holes images. And the question is, why? Why does it look like that? And why does it mean that we're seeing a black hole? So that's my work. I try to explain things and learn how you can use observations to learn about physics, about astrophysics. Black holes have these very special objects. We think we know exactly what happens inside a black hole, apart from one point, the point at the very center. There there is what is called a singularity. That's where my equations break and everything breaks. Now, as a scientist, we don't believe that this is right. We think that for this you need a quantum mechanical theory of gravity, which we don't have yet. And we've been looking for this for more than 50 years now. At one point, once you are, are dealing with a problem for such a long time without being able to uh, solve it, you kind of accept it as some annoying feature that you just have to live with. Whatever happens inside is behind closed doors and, and doesn't really affect. And so I can still find pleasure in, in, in studying black holes without having to worry too much. When you're low on your batteries in terms of enthusiasm, interacting with someone who has a passion recharges you and, and puts you into the mood of working uh, and doing research. The fascination in mathematics is that is. Um, it's a universal language. The order or the harmony in things in nature, they reflect a certain precise order in mathematics. Mathematics pervades all of our lives. It's amazing how much of the music actually follows precise mathematical laws. And so it's, it's a beautiful language that explains many, many things. What we don't understand is why. Why is it like that? That's a, a question that I don't think you can answer, you know, using just rational thinking. Uh, it's it's a, more of a philosophical or even teleological question. I come from Bari in South Italy, which is on the sea. I was very attached um, to the sea. I'm still am, but I certainly consider now my center of gravity to be Frankfurt. What I like about Frankfurt is that it's very compact and is very international, which is also very important to me. There is this very interesting way of describing research. If you know what you're doing, you're not doing research. The type of research I do is very fundamental. Knowing that there is a black hole at the center of our galaxy doesn't change anybody's life, right? We will have still to pay the same bills, have to sort out the same problems every day. It addresses very basic need. It's the need of knowing, you know, knowing what's around us and how things work. But there is a, 
another spin to this, and that is all of what we do maybe doesn't have an impact now, but will have an impact on a time scale of maybe 20, 30 years. That's because technology is just the result of, of you know, science questions asked without having a technology in mind.